Good evening, good evening, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Do hope you are having a good day. Hey, Trish, how are you? Please feel free to go to our website for the Streams Church to get the Bible study lesson, okay? So, we are going to do our best to jump pretty quickly into this word, amen? Please share, invite someone to join us. As you see, we're talking about Daniel as the prophet and intercessor, and Daniel was also a priest. So, um, it's the book of Daniel, just kind of jumping around, but want to lay the foundation of as an intercessor, as a prophet, what does that look like? What does intercession look like as a prophet? Um, so let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to share your word. Father, I pray that this word falls upon good ground and it produces what it is sent to produce in your sons and daughters. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to share your word. Now use me for your glory and use me, God, that your people will learn and grow uh, in a new way. Amen. Amen. So I got the fan on because it's hot. Okay. So hopefully you guys can hear me. Hello, Ivory. Um, please share, tag, and invite someone to join us. Amen. Um, Daniel. Daniel, we are in the eternal glory of the intercession uh, lesson. And this is still lesson four. And we are picking up on the ninth section. And here we are talking about Daniel. Daniel as the prophet and intercessor he is also a he's a priest right he comes from the lineage of priests and one of the things that it talks about is how daniel interceded in the background now when i was called into intercession and i'll say it was, it was a call because i didn't know nothing about it and when i was called into intercession i was taught that intercessor intercessors are in the background. They are not seen. You know, it's kind of like a kid. Be seen but not heard. And that's what I was taught. Uh, we don't come out front. We don't... Um, no one should even know that you're an intercessor or know that you are interceding. Well, over time, in these last 20 so years or so, we have progressed past that. But that was how... I was taught, and I would venture to guess many of you who who um, have been called into the position of intercession, that that's how you were taught. When God allowed me to, uh, for Pastor Hill, uh, to assign me to be over the intercessors at the Streams Church, God was very clear to me about bringing the intercessors out front. I I'm not sure if it was because... We were a new ministry, but that's what the Lord instructed me to do. And so that's what I did. And um, we are the Streams Church. And we have said from the beginning, we are not church as usual. <laughs> so how God allowed me to present uh, intercession was probably a little different than what most people, even some of the intercessors that served in the ministry, uh, had functioned. And I had no clue of what I was doing. That's just the honest to God truth. Uh, I was constantly praying because though I prayed in private and enjoyed my time, I did not know how to lead intercessors. intercessors. But I knew I was called to that. I think I had every book on what did it mean to be an intercessor, a prophetic intercessor, uh, pigs in the parlor, you name it, you know, beta Satan, you name it, I had the book. And so that's how God instructed me. So we would line the intercessors up in position in the sanctuary back then. And that's how God had me do it. I often tell people, most of us are not as smart as we present ourselves to be. 
God just gives us instruction and wisdom. And because of that, we look real smart. <laughs> but really, it's just the leading of the Holy Spirit. And it is important as an intercessor, as a prophet, whatever your um, ascension gift assignment is in the kingdom, that you are seeking God. If it's, what is your will? What is my assignment? What is the vision that you have for this ministry? Oh gosh, those have a reflection. What is your ministry? Uh, what is your assignment for my life, for uh, my my place in ministry, your business, your marriage? Whatever it is, you should, const you should be seeking God um, continuously for the plan, the vision, the purpose that he has for you, your ministry, your business, your marriage, your life, whatever it is. And so that's how we flowed at that time. And so this talks about Daniel's intercession being private behind the scenes. And so if you are an intercessor and you are listening, um, I would want, I would ask you in your assignment, hello, Kimberly and Val and, um, Tony and Trish and Ivory and all of you wonderful people who are listening, um, I would ask you, if you are an intercessor, how do you feel about being out front in that place? Put your comments here. Or do you prefer to be behind the scenes? And guess what? That is perfectly fine. That is perfectly fine if your intercession is behind the scenes. Uh, some people battle behind the scenes in spiritual warfare. And many are uh, do they conduct their place of intercession behind the scenes. And that is perfectly fine fine but i'm just curious where are you at in that thought so daniel's name literally meant god is my judge god is my strength that's what his name meant so when he was taken into babylon um nebuchadnezzar was taken into babylon the the king sent his people out and told them to look for specific things they were hand-picked and Daniel and his crew, his boys, they were handpicked. He said they had to be attractive. That's what he's saying now. Because they had to come into the service of the king. The king wanted to look at handsome men. I don't know what that's about, but that might be another study. So he said they had to be physically of no defect. Um, they had to be of a royal family. He, he said their criteria was that um, they had to be smart. They had to be well-read. Uh, they had to be knowledgeable in, in all things. This was his criteria for those who were to come into the service of the king. They were to serve the king. And specifically, in Daniel's case, his job was to interpret the king's dreams. Again, Daniel was uh, of a royal uh, lineage of priests. He was a prophet and he was an intercessor. And so, um, he they go on to say that... Daniel and his boys had to be taught, hello, Aretha, Daniel and his boys had to be taught the things of Babylon. They had to learn the language. They had to learn uh, the literature, including the readings, the writings, the music, everything concerning Babylon. Now, if your name means God is my judge, and now I am pulled out of my place, handpicked, to go into a territory and be retaught of things that I don't want to learn. I, I have often looked at Daniel as what is happening with our generation of men right now. They are often pulled out of what they grew up in. Many of these young men who are committing crimes in the street and, and are adult, particularly African American men, they're raised in the church and something happens. They are handpicked, and I'm going to say it, by the devil, by the ills and the traumas of their community. And they are pulled out and they are retaught the things of this world as they go. The music, the, the literature, the writings, everything. They are retaught. Their minds... I'm not going to say they brainwashed. I'm not going to say that. But their, their mind maps of how they were raised in church every Sunday might be in a, a, the, the, the choir and, and mentoring groups for young men. I think about the young man, um, uh, Dre Sean. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. Raised in the church. 
um, a part of 100 Black Men uh, mentoring program, all of these things. You didn't see any tats on this young man. He goes off to the service. He comes back. He's different. He gets involved in the things of this world. How does that happen? The enemy hand picks people to serve in his kingdom and if you do not understand that that is what he is doing i don't care if you got your child in a christian school i don't care if they are going to church every day if you do not understand that the enemy first of all you must understand that the enemy don't come after raggedy people did you know that he ain't coming after nobody they ain't got no talent and no skill he, that's not what he's doing. He's coming after those. What, what did he say? What did the king say? I need you to be of no defect. I need you to be smart. I need you to be talented. I need you to be gifted. And he comes after someone whose name means God is my strength. God is my judge. Now, I know people just name their kids anything. But his, he literally represented the name of God. So when he, he, by his name, he literally represented God. So when he was pulled out and handpicked to serve in, hey, Brother Preston, uh, Brother, uh, yeah. So when he was pulled out to serve in Babylon, Babylon, the Bible says, he said, I will not defile myself or God. By eating the things of Babylon. He said, no, I'm not going to put this stuff in my body. He told the man, he said, listen, give me 10 days. This is where we get the Daniel fast from. He said, give me 10 days to eat just fruits and vegetables. He said, and if, and I, if I am not healthier than those who are uh, partaking of the food from the table of Babylon, he said, then basically I'll submit. Well, we know the story that... When Daniel finished, Daniel was healthier, his skin was healthier, everything was better about him eating uh, fruits and vegetables only. And again, that's where we get the Daniel fast. Now, isn't it interesting that this was 600 and some years before Christ, and today, 2,000 years plus past Christ, we're still talking about the Daniel fast. Now, what can you imagine being so effective and what God has called you to do, that 2,000 years later, besides Jesus and us reading about someone in the word, that what you institute is still being talked about. I don't know if we're going to be here 2,000 years from now, but I'm just saying. Can you imagine if God allows what you do for him to still be talked about 2,000 years from now? That's something right there. That's something right there. So that's what Daniel's faithfulness and obedience to God means. Now, we also know that Daniel's name was changed. Please tag, share, and invite someone to join us in this study. We're talking about Daniel, the prophet, the priest, the intercessor. The truth is, I believe people under the sound of my voice are called into intercession, but you don't know. Sometimes you can find yourself in a place where people are saying, will you pray for me? And you're like, why everybody always asking me to pray? Because you're probably an intercessor. Yeah, you probably have been called into intercession. Now, understanding everyone's intercession is different. I am not the intercessor that takes a list and write down people's names. I don't do that. That's not how God uses me. If you tell me you need me to pray, I'm going to pray right then. So I can make sure... I'm covering you in what you desire to be covered in or about. I also know that I am a prophet. Because I am a prophetic intercessor, I will, God will download things to me like Daniel and give me messages through intercession. Does that make sense? Whether it's something to tell you or to tell someone else. So it's, un it's important that you understand what type of intercessor you are. God used Daniel to interpret dreams. On occasion, God uses me to interpret dreams. That's not one of the primary things that he does, but that's one of the ways. But because he was a prophet, he was available to God, he had made a commitment to God, God was able to use Daniel in whatever way he chose. We sing the song, Lord, I'm available to you. Really? 
my will I give to you. I'll do what you say, do use me, Lord. Really? Really? So, when you sing that song and you really mean it, expect God to say, okay, here we go. I'm going to use you. I'm going to use you for my glory. I'm going to use you in the way that I determine is best for you to be used. And so you avail yourself to him. And that's what Daniel did. So we know that when they renamed him, it was Bel, and people pronounce this wrong, Belta, Bel, Belta Hazar, Belta Hazar. They renamed him. And when they renamed him, his name literally meant to protect the life of the king. Now, how do I live in protect the life of the king, but my original first name, and really the name I'm, I'm seeking to live according to meant the Lord is my strength. God is my strength. God is my judge. He had to figure out how to live in between both of these worlds. Now I'm going to help us with something. Many of us have to decide how to live in multiple worlds, corporate world at home at church. Now, what, what I believe Daniel will teach us how to do, he was, he was the name that he was given as Daniel, no matter where he was. When he was serving the king, yeah, the king might have called him by the name that uh, his servant named him. Yeah, he might have called him that. But who he was and who he knew himself to be, was always Daniel when he went in the fires when he went into the fire the lion's den he was still Daniel and that is why he was able to walk out of there and not smell like smoke that's why he was able to come out of there and the lion didn't eat him up so no matter what environment you are in beloved you have to make a decision that whether I'm at work I'm at church I'm at home I'm still going to be who God has called me to be this is why when you have prophetic gifts, you just trying to sit down and eat some Applebee's and here come the server bringing you your chicken wings and french fries. And all of a sudden you got a word for them. You just trying to be regular old who you are and eat your wings and fries and drink your Pepsi, drink your Pepsi and go home. But because that is a part of who you are, God will use you because you have told him I'm available. And sometimes when we're saying we're not available, we haven't confessed that. God will still use us because there is someone who needs the gift that you possess. So it is important that when you recognize your gifts, you are consistently giving them back to God and asking God to use you for his glory. Amen. Amen. So let's go on here. So with Daniel, the relationship with God was so important to him. Remember, priest prophet, intercessor. He was all of that at the same time. And so this was very important to Daniel. So in, in his place, we know there are so many nuggets uh, in the book of Daniel. There are so many nuggets in the book of Daniel. But one of my favorite uh, passages is Daniel chapter 10. And that's, excuse me, that's when the um, Daniel is praying and he's fasting and the bible says that the angel comes to him and says from the moment you start fasting which had been three weeks 21 days he said from the moment you had started fasting he said i was on my way but the prince of persia with came up against me so whatever daniel was praying about you have to understand whether you are an intercessor or you are praying about something and seeking God, you must understand that there are spiritual beings in places who are, who they are fighting. They are warring with the angels that are assigned to your life to keep that message, that word, that answer from coming to you. But you have to continue to press in and pray. You have to continue. Yes, your healing has not come yet, but you continue to press in to pray. Play. 
pray. You continue to press in to pray. The job has not come yet. You continue to press in and pray. The marriage has not been reconciled yet. You continue to press in and pray. You believe that singleness is not your portion. You continue to press in and pray. Because what you must understand, there is a force, spiritual wickedness in high places, good God Almighty, that is coming against what you are asking God to do. And Lord have mercy when it's God's will. They are absolutely standing in your way. They are bringing confusion and drama and all of these things. And you're like, what is going on? Why is my answer taking so long? Well, Daniel 10 lets you know. Because the prince of Persia, his imps, the enemy, they are standing in the way of your answer. They are standing. If it is God's will, we know that sickness and disease are, are not, God does not send them. He allows them, but he doesn't send them. But if it is God's will healed on this side of glory and you absolutely believe that, not wishful thinking, you've gotten a, a, a dream, an indicator from the Lord, the word has been confirmed through signs and wonders and messages, and you know this. And because you know this and you continue to pray, you must understand that the prince of Persia, his imps, his soldiers, they are standing in the way of your prayer being answered. And this is why connecting where two or three are gathered in the earth, touching in the green upon anything, God has promised to be in the midst of it. This is why that is important. Because sometimes in your weakness, it is hard to continue to press and pray. You need somebody to come into agreement with you, to touch and agree, touch and agree in the spirit. They could be living somewhere else and you touch and agree over the phone. You get your prayer assignment together. You say the same thing. This is what's important. Babylon is still in existence. The name means confusion. Ain't nothing new. If there is confusion, again, God is not the author of confusion. Mm, mm, mm. This is good, Jesus. I'm getting my own help. God is not the author of confusion. So if there is confusion in your life, Babylon is in operation. The spirit of Babylon is in operation. There's confusion in your home. The spirit of Babylon is in operation. There's confusion. The name not only means confusion, it also means um, pride. Because that land, that country, those people... Were, were said to do to I mean my goodness they they had idolatry and and idols in every corner all types of them I think I can't even remember what the number was when I studied it years ago but they operated heavily in idols and they operated in pride and so with that pride came confusion. They didn't want to be told what to do, how to do, when to do. They wanted to do things their way and on their own. And so what happened was that God eventually, we know, brought them down. And so uh, the city itself represented pride, arrogance, and idolatry. And so this is what a humbled man who said, his, whose name meant God is my judge. This is where he had to live. Many of you are on jobs and you're like, why, God, why do you have me here? This job does not reflect who you are. This job does not reflect um, what you have called me to be. And I'm on this job with these people. God wants you to still represent and reflect his nature in that place and space. You cannot step out of who God has called you to be in that place and in that space for such a time as when you are there. And so he's called in his assignment to protect the king. So anytime the king had a dream, he had a vision, he would call Daniel in and Daniel would be asked to interpret those dreams. The Bible says that Daniel and his boys were wiser than any... Um, <laughs> um, magical person who operated 
in those areas. They were wiser than everyone. Their fasting, their prayed life, their their um their life of consecration before God caused them to rise in front of the king. Now, we know that the Bible says God will sit you before kings. He will not only will he prepare a table before you the presence of your enemies, he will cause your gifts to bring you in the presence of kings. Anybody ever have that happen in your world? That king may be the president of the company. It may be the vice president of the company. It may be the supervisor or someone you've never met. But because of your gifts, your worth ethic, your integrity, it has brought you before people that other people are like, how did you get invited to that lunch? How did that happen? Well, that's what will happen when the gifts of God are in operation in your life. And so here we are. Um, as the angel in Daniel chapter 10 uh, comes to Daniel and says, hey, since the moment you start praying um, for 21 days, this is Michael who's talking to Daniel. He said, the prince of Persia withstood me. He said, but now I have come to make you understand what will happen to the people in the latter days. I've come to answer your prayers. God is coming to answer your prayers. Do not grow weary in your prayer life. Do not give up with seeking God. But you have to seek him. You have to seek him to know which way to take. You have to seek him to know how to maneuver and how to move in your life. You have to seek him. God said, ask, seek, and knock. He said, you have not because you ask not. You don't have understanding. You don't have clarity. You don't have purpose. You don't have vision. Whatever you do not have is because you haven't asked God. You don't have peace. It's because you haven't asked God. You don't have clarity. It's because you haven't asked God. And listen, I've been guilty. Ain't nobody saying. I mean, I've had seasons where I'm like, I don't feel like praying. Prophet, elder, minister, all of that, intercessor. I have had seasons where I just did not want to pray. Isn't that crazy? But it's the truth, right? This is what we go through. This is what we go through in the life of believers, as believers. But you must keep pressing in in prayer until you get your answer. I know it says um, push Praise until something happens. We say, uh, pray, pray, praise, whatever you want to use in that, the, in the, in that, in the position of the P. Do it until what you are asking for, asking God to do, happens. Amen. Give me some thumbs up, some likes, so I know you're out there listening. So here we are with Daniel. Um, Daniel, Daniel prophesied. Let me state that. Daniel prayed because he was a priest. I want to submit to you, if you believe you have any prophetic gift, and certainly if you are a prophet, intercessory prayer, a prayer life, an intercessory prayer goes along with the prophet and the apostle and the evangelist and the pastor and the teacher, but absolutely the prophet and the apostle. Please share, tag, and invite someone to join us. For a prophet, says I'm a prophet to say to me that they do not have a consistent prayer life. Um, they do not find themselves in intercession. This is me. Now, don't shut me down. I would question if you are a prophet or if you simply have wonderfully so prophetic gifts because to say that you are a prophet and you do not spend time in prayer and worship hey baby destiny i would question but who am i who am i it may be a new day and that's not required but i don't think that's the case so i want to encourage you believer call to intercession you're a christian there should be you should there should be a life of prayer amen amen so here we are uh again with daniel um the dynamics of prayer the dynamics of um prayer and fasting which is what daniel did for those 10 days that thing gives you strength 
When you pray and you fast and you seek God, it gives you strength. Not only does it bring answers now, will you always get your answers immediately, like in the moment? Maybe not. Some things he may speak while you're in the midst of that prayer and fasting season. Other things may happen on the other side of it when you come out. It might, it, it will, you may get the answer uh, as you go down the road. But understand that praying and fasting not only causes you to uh, it humbles you, but it also strengthens you at the same time. When we're weak, we're made strong. Because it is through our submission and humbling ourselves and getting into and under uh, into the presence of God and under his wing and submitting ourselves and humbling ourselves that we are made strong. It is from that place that we can be exalted. Amen. So I encourage us in pray, prayer and fasting. And the Bible says by the time um, Daniel gets to, let me go back to this prayer and fasting thing. Over in, was it Mark 9? I, actually, I posted this today. Over in Mark 9 with the demon-possessed young man. The Bible says that the people asked Jesus, why, could, why, had, why did his disciples, why were they not able to cast out uh, the demon? And Jesus said, because some things only come by way of prayer and fasting. Now, this says to me that the disciples were probably praying, but they probably had not submitted themselves into a fast. Now, it could be the other way around. They were fasting, but they weren't praying. If you are fasting and you're not praying, then you probably just missed a couple of meals because that's not fasting. Okay, because fasting and prayer go together. And so it is through our prayer and our fasting and submitting ourselves to God that our faith is built up. I know you're saying, how is that possible? Because when you're seeking God in prayer and fasting, God will speak. He will encourage you. Again, if you are called to intercession, if you are called to the place of the prophet, uh, the apostle, any of the of the um, five ascension gifts that we call offices in the apostolic church. But when you are praying and fasting as a Christian, as a believer, you are asking God typically to do something, to move something in the spirit realm. And the very fact that you go in asking you must have faith to go in and even ask. You have to have faith before you ever go in to say, Lord, I need you to do this. And because I need you to do this and I am desperate for you to do this, I'm going to turn over my plate for three days, five days, seven days, 10 days, 21 days, 40 days, whatever it is. I'm only going to eat fruits and vegetables. I'm, I'm going to have some days in there where I only drink water. It's so this is how you when you see when you are seeking God like that, your faith will be added to. He will add to your faith and your faith will be increased. So when we come to Mark 9 and G and, and God, Jesus says to them, he, he rebukes them really because of their faith. He, he rebukes the father. He rebukes the disciples in Mark 9 and the onlookers because he was like, where's your faith? Where's your faith? I said this earlier in a post. There are things now the most ideal situation of anyone being delivered and brought out um, is when the receiver, when the receiver has faith to receive that God is going to do what is being asked. And when the people who are praying and asking God have faith, when those two come together, hey, Sands, Camille, when those two come together in prayer and in intercession and deliverance, God, that's the ideal situation. God has to move. But there are times that the person that is receiving, they don't have faith. They're too weak. They're sick. They're feeble. They could be unconscious. They could not be a believer. But you are interceding for someone's soul for them to get saved. They don't know to have faith. So God will sometimes intervene and deliver and save and set free and heal without the recipient having faith. Good God Almighty. But somebody, for it to happen, in the earth, 
connected to them must be praying. And in Daniel's case, he's showing us and fasting. In Mark chapter 9, and fasting. And so this is important. If you believe you are called to the position, place of intercession, it's important that you have a fasted life. Now, I think I shared this in another lesson. I went through a season that um, I fasted on Wednesdays for years. And I remember distinctly when God told me that fast don't mean nothing to me. I remember it. I remember it distinctly. Why did it not mean anything to God anymore? Because it had become ritual. I just had gotten used to not eating on Wednesdays. And God wanted nothing to do with that. It's the fast that God calls. I see y'all going, oh yeah, but some of y'all too. Some folk don't even fast. So good God almighty. So God wants the fast that he calls. That is for the purpose of humbling ourselves and sacrificing ourselves and dying to ourselves and adding and increasing our faith and standing in the gap for people. That is the purpose. And sometimes it's me, oh Lord, that I'm turning over my plate for. And so we must understand that the prayer that God is calling us to and the fast that God will call you to and what Daniel did was for not only to get answers for the king, I believe Daniel was fasting for his own good. Like I said, you're in jobs. Some of you are in, re in relationships. Good God Almighty. You need to keep yourself under the hand of the mighty God because if not, you might clock on somebody. You might go postal. And so the purpose of your fast is to keep you at peace. Good God. Yeah, it's to, it's to yeah, uh-huh. It's to help you. So you won't lose it in the midst of the things that are going on in your life. And so this is where Daniel was. And so the Bible says, um, well, not the Bible, this lesson talks about um, that Daniel was older, like the lion's, I can't remember if it was the lion's den or, or the fiery furnace. One of them, he wasn't a boy. No, it must have been, uh, must have been, must have been in the lion's den. He was a man. He was a grown man. He was an older man. So from the point that he was brought in, you know, 70 years, 65 years. So he was old, y'all. Daniel was old. And he still stayed in his faith and in his walk with God. That is an amazing testimony. That is the testimony that all of us want. Some of us got saved at 10, at 12, at 13, and 11, and 8, right? For somebody, you know. Yeah, tell me when you got saved. Just put that in the message. When you got saved and how old you are now. Just put that in the comments for me. Put that in the comments for me. And this is this is the faith that Daniel had. This is the faith that Daniel had, that he did not allow himself to be wavered because he was in somebody's land, because he was a part of somebody's corporation. You know, I remember when uh, I was at uh, Eastern Star and this young man came to me and he had heard me, I don't know, teach at, um, it, might, it must have been Sunday school. And um, he had heard me teach and he worked for a liquor company. And he said, whatever I said brought such, such conviction to him that he thought, I can't work there anymore. And I'm like, now, you better know the Lord's telling you to leave your job. You a married man. Just jumping up and leaving. <laughs> you better go home and talk to your wife about that. But no matter, okay, amen, amen, that's good. All right, Karen, got saved at 12 and you're 50. That's good. That's 38 years. That's 38 years. Camille got saved at 11. Yeah, another 39 years. That's good news. That's good news. Come on, Rita, 24 years. You have been in the kingdom. You've worked at companies. You've worked for people that you knew were not saved. You knew that they didn't love God, but you still came and served and was faithful in your job. That is exactly what Daniel did for 65 years. Good God Almighty. And we know that Daniel was brought out and then he, uh, um, King Cyrus brought him in uh, and, and um, he was able to serve God differently than when he was in Babylon. He was able to freely serve the Lord. And so um, sometimes it's difficult to uh, be a Christian and you want to say, 
praise the Lord in, 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 in a meeting. Well, thank you, Jesus. You got to say it under your breath, you know, at the board. <laughs> Amen. At the board table. You know, you just can't freely praise God sometimes in your position. You know, you work in customer service and you're giving somebody good news about their mortgage or something. Amen. But you can't. They're like praising God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I've had people that came on through with me. They was like, amen, girl. Thank you so much. And I came on through with them. And so sometimes because of our environment, we feel like we can't praise God. We know the story of Daniel when he was caught. That's why he was put into the lion's den uh, or the fiery furnace because he was caught praying. He was heard praying to his God and not praying to the king. You aren't even supposed to be praying because remember his name meant to protect the life of the king. So if that's what my name, my new name means, what I look like out here, yeah, and you praying to your God? Oh, no, that was that was heresy. What are you doing? Come on, come on, Brother Jonathan. Yeah, that's what I'm talking. I mean, we have been in the kingdom for years. And we have found ourselves sometimes being tested in our faith and in our walk. But you stuck with it. You haven't turned away from God. Life's tragedies and life's traumas tested you, but you stayed with God. Ah, glory to God. You know, um, when, when Daniel made that vow to God and he said, I will not defile my God or myself. The Bible talks about do not make a vow to God that you cannot keep. Matter of fact, it says, woe to them. I often use that when I'm coaching couples. Woe to them who make a vow. You make a vow when you get married. You make vows to each other. Many of us, matter of fact, the Bible says, don't make a vow to God. We're too frail. We're, we're, we, we, are, we are too susceptible to, to making mistakes. God said, don't even make a vow to me. Don't make no vow to me because you bow ain't going to keep it. <laughs> Good God Almighty, just say, Lord, help me. I, I want to do this and I want to do it the right way and I want to please you. Lord, faithful God. He's a loving God. God doesn't want you to fail. Do you understand that? God doesn't want you to fail. He does not want you to fall. And so when we understand this, he is your very present help in the time of trouble. Glory to God. And so the whole book of Daniel is about the sovereignty of God. It's about the sovereignty, the, the preeminence of God. It is about uh, the sovereignty of God over kings, over people, over spirits, Prince of Persia, over the angels, Michael, and over you know, Archangel Michael, over our lives. God is sovereign. It is the sovereignty of God that, that comes to lead us into all truth. It is his sovereignty alone that when you're weak, you're made strong. God wants to help you because he loves you. Did you know that? God loves you and he wants to help you. And so um, what you must understand that God in his sovereignty will work everything that he needs to work. Hey, Abby, for your good, because all things work together for your good because you love God and are the called according to his purpose. And so he his goal is to work everything out for your good. His goal is no matter what. You are going to come out better on the other side than when you went in. His restoration and reset process is to make you better. I know it hurts. I know it does. I know it doesn't feel good. I know it looks like it's going to falter or fall apart. But God wants you to hear tonight that just like Daniel, who was brought into captivity, it worked out for his good. Just like Daniel, who was thrown into the lion's den, it worked out for his good. Just like Daniel, who's put into uh, the fiery furnace, it worked out for his good and Jesus was with him. Good God Almighty. God is with you. So Daniel could say, well, Lord, you're my strength and you're my judge. So I know you're going to always be with me. This is why it's important to name your children. Now, some of your kids are grown. It's past the fact. But when you, as your grandkids come or more grandkids come, it's important that their names have meaning. 
Some of us are past that. My father had no idea that my name meant grace in Swahili. He, there was no way for him to predict and him and my mother that I was going to be born on May 5th, which is five is the grace of God. 10 is the wholeness of God. Double five is the mercy of God. And so they had no idea that my name, my name literally means grace. They didn't know that. They didn't know that I was going to be born on May 5th and five is the number of grace. But that's the sovereignty. That's the preeminence of God. Good God Almighty. Your steps have been ordered by the Lord. And this is why you must ask him. This is why you must seek his face. This is why you must know what the will of God is for your life. If nothing else, we know that the will of God is that we believe. Hello, Brother Triplett. That we believe and that we not only believe in him unto salvation, we believe him, his word, his the full word of what God has for you. We must believe that is the will of God. And so it's important. We know that when we get to heaven, we're going to get a new name. Now we know Daniel's name in heaven is not going to be Daniel and his show ain't going to be Belhelzar. It ain't going to be that. Good God Almighty. But we all going to get a new name. I wonder if my name is going to be Grace. Because Lord have mercy. God has been gracious towards me. Goodness and mercy has followed me all the days of my life. On the good days and the days that I was being stupid. Okay. He's a good God. He's a gracious God. He's a loving God. He's a sovereign God. He is magnificent and he is holy. His majesty is nothing to be compared to. His goodness, good God Almighty, rules and reigns over your life and my life. That's why you woke up this morning and you had your name called. You didn't even know your name was called because you was unconscious. Good God Almighty. You were unconscious, but your name was called in the spirit realm, the place where, where prayers go. Good God Almighty, the place where prayers go. And when your name is lifted up in the spirit realm, all you knew was you woke up and stretched and said, oh, good God, it's beautiful outside. Or thank you, Jesus, I woke up. Yeah, say that because God called your name in the spirit realm and you awaken to see another day. Ah, that's good news. That's good news of this loving God that we serve. He is sovereign. He is sovereign. And his preeminence is evident in your life his strength and his power hey brother stanley is evident in your life so as we continue to seek god for purpose and and for his will god wants you to be comforted in knowing that you have a friend in jesus by us coming into this friendship you know think about it God said, um, he calls us friend. Hey, Sans Wanda, God says he calls us friend. Now, understand this. Tell me, do you have any friends that you don't like? Just, you know, you ain't got no friends you don't like. There are no people that you call a friend that you do not like. Now, you may have family members that you love and don't like. You choose your friends. You choose your friends. God chose you. He not only chose you and me to be a part of this family and said we are heirs and joint heirs with Jesus. This is just good. I hope somebody is being encouraged. Good God Almighty. He chose you not only as his son in the sonship as a daughter. He also chose you as his friend and calls you beloved. There is not a friend that you have that you don't like because you chose them. And the minute they start doing stuff that don't agree with your morals, your your vision, your your life, your lifestyle, they change what they're doing and it don't fit no more, they ain't your friend. You don't roll out with them. But yet, Jesus calls us his friend. That is good news. And this opportunity to come into intercession and prayer and commune with him and talk to him and have a conversation with him as you go in the grocery store in the shower as you're driving on my walks with with that i walk with god and ask you guys to walk with me 
Yes, all of that is communing with God and being in friendship, relationship with him. That's a privilege. What a privilege and an honor to be called a friend of God. Then Israel make the song, I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Oh, that's good news. That's good news. So uh, God wants you to be encouraged. He wants to use you in the gift and place of intercession. He certainly wants all of us, and it is our uh, responsibility, it is the privilege to pray, to again, to commune and have conversation with God and for God to talk back to you and to have this dialogue in the spirit, to know that you can pray and you can tap into a spirit realm that God will hear you. He said that if your, your heart does not condemn you, you can ask for what you will and your God in heaven will hear. He said where two or three are gathered, touching in the green upon anything. Jesus promised to be in the midst of us and God will hear and answer. Intercession, agreement, partnership, friendship. If you don't have a prayer partner, I encourage you to get one, right? If you don't have someone who comes into agreement with you in prayer, I said it earlier, sometimes there are things that are so heavy and intense and of, of such a great magnitude, you need someone praying with you and praying for you and coming into agreement. Even when you're not praying, they're praying. No ministry, I believe this, is effective without intercessors who are on the wall Hey, Sister Carolyn, praying. Who, who do not come off the wall until they get an answer. One of the things that I believe it, um, we don't often understand about intercession. Let's say you have a debt. Let's say you have a debt. The debt is $10,000. And you get gifted with $5,000. We praise God. We got the five. God answered. God answered. Was that the prayer? Are you finished? Are you finished praying? Or do you need to keep going until you get the full mounty of what you're asking for? This is the part often that I think we miss in prayer and intercession. We stop before we get the full reward of what we're praying for. We say, God, heal them of this disease and heal them of that disease. And he does it. But we don't ask God to take away the residue. We don't ask God to take away the desire. Deliver them from this and deliver them from that. And guess what? God does it. But we don't say take the taste out of their mouth that they don't want to drink no more. That they don't want to smoke crack no more. That they don't want to steal no more. That they take the desire from them. Make them whole. Make it, make it such that they don't even know what that looks like. What, what was that like? I don't even know what that was like. Hello. 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 Let's see. Somebody said hi. Hey, Yolanda, how are you, dear? How's Dallas? So listen, what I want to encourage you in, in prayer and in intercession, is that you finish it out until you see the full manifestation of what it is you are asking God to do. Not a portion of it. You, you got, you, you need, Lord, I want a house. What kind of house? Be clear. Daniel was clear in his prayers. That's why when the angel in Daniel chapter 10 came to answer, he came and answered exactly what Daniel had prayed for. Quit these vague prayers. Ask God for what you want. You have not because you ask not. And I know people use that scripture, you pray amiss. That's not, that's like, you know, you're praying without faith. You're not really believing. So, but you have to pray for exactly what you want and trust God by faith to do it. And he'll do it. Certainly if it's his will. Now you can't be praying. P-R-E-Y. Over something that is not yours. That does not belong to you. In the natural or the spirit. But anything that's in that scripture. In this word. You can say Lord. This, the word says X, Y, and Z. And I'm standing on this word. You told me to put, me, put you in remembrance of your word. So, Lord, I'm putting you in remembrance of your word. This is what I need you to do. God does not want you to be living in regret and shame and embarrassment and, and hopelessness and fear and doubt and worry. That's Matter of fact, did you know the scripture says worry is a sin? He said, let worry worry about itself, which means it has a personality. Stop worrying. Give that stuff to God. He is more than able 
incapable of handling what it is that you need for him to do. So we come to God today like Daniel. Amen. I will not defile my God with that job, with that offer. I'm not going to sell myself to the king of Babylon. Cover your sons and your daughters. Cover them with the blood of Jesus as they go, as they come, as they're out here in the world. Because the king of Babylon, that spirit is after them. If go back and watch this from the beginning when I talked about how they were handpicked and there was a criteria, the gifted, the talented, the wise, the intelligent, and then they were drawn away from the things of God. Now, taken away from the things of God. But the beauty of Daniel and his boys was that they did not allow themselves to be drawn away from God and to give themselves over to the things of the kingdom of Babylon. Amen. So I love you with the love of the Lord. I pray that this message encouraged you. Please look up in the comments in the uh, post of the title of this lesson and you will see the phone number, um, the text number that you can text and give your seat to the Strings Church where A. Thomas Hill is our senior pastor. And so we thank God for you joining us tonight. I pray again that something was said to encourage you, uh, understanding the power of intercession, understanding uh, your stick to to remain with God and in the kingdom, that there is a reward that is coming, understanding that the enemy is going to try to stand in your way for prayers not to be answered, but you hold on, hold on to your faith. Hold on to what you believe about God. Hold on, Wanda. Hold on, Yolanda. Carolyn, hold on. Hold on, Camille. Hold on. Hold on, Stanley. Hold on, Renardo. Hold on, Jonathan. Hold on, Retha. Glory to God. Hold on, Karen. Hold on. I might not be able to say all of you. Hold on, Destiny. Hold on. Hold on in the name of Jesus. Hold on, Tammy. And hold on, Anita. Hold on, Tam, for what God has promised you. Hold on, Tracy and, and Sister Hooten and uh, Sister Owens. And hallelujah. Hold on. And all those whose names I did not mention. Hold on, Abby. And hold on, Ivory. Hold on to your faith. You keep coming to God. Because God has not left you and he's not going to leave you. He has not forgotten you. And he will not forget your labor of love. He did not forget Daniel's labor of love to stay with him until the end, no matter what happens. Daniel stayed through the whole time that he was in captivity and God brought him out. God's going to bring you out too. You just hold on. We love God today. God, I thank you for those under the sound of my voice. And I pray that this word touched someone and grew them up in their faith and in their hope in you. Daddy, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for Jesus, your son, our savior. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that comes to lead us into all truth, our comforter. We thank you and we love you. We thank you for the word that was made manifest and now dwells among us. We love you, God, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Please enjoy the rest of your evening, and I will see you soon. Expect I'm going to be doing a Facebook Live on understanding the prophetic here in the next few days, so stay tuned and watch for that. Amen. A lot of prophetic words are going out about the virus and about end times and about dreams that people have had, and it's important that you understand how to judge and measure those words um, that... People are sharing and say they are that they're prophetic and they very well may be but you have to understand how to judge them and how to me uh, measure them amen so look for that post I will be doing that in the next few days God bless you I love you with the love of the Lord